Okay, here's the spreadsheet for generating the G code that will zero your X, Y, and Z axis all at one time. Uh, on this page, when you first load it up, there's some basic instructions here. I'll scroll down through there that talk a little bit about it. And got an email address down here at the bottom if you have any questions or comments or you need changes or whatever. And also, I have some examples of different bit sizes and how you would set that up down at the very bottom of the page right down here there is a, a tab you can click on to go to the actual g-code generator so I'll click on that there we go now then on this page uh, the green boxes are where you're gonna enter your information the blue box is where you're gonna select from inch mode or millimeter mode this yellow section right here is the g-code that is being generated and here's some uh, instructions over here for you. So let's just uh, set up a, a G code file here. We're going to start with an inch mode, so that's already selected right there. The desired feed rate. <clears throat> now, this uh, in the inch mode, uh, you want to be between 1 and 5, and that's inches per minute. If you go faster than that, then you risk damaging your bits or bumping the touch plate, which will move it out of the way and uh, then you won't get an extra accurate zero. If you leave it at one, it moves pretty slow, but that's the safest speed to move at. So you can just experiment with that. Right now I've got it set at two. The next one is a bit diameter. That's going to be the diameter of your bit. Uh, that's the largest portion of your bit that you, that you have. Uh, if you have a one, a one sixteenth inch ball nose bit that has a one eighth inch shank, then you're going to want to use a 1 8 inch uh, bit size because you're going to touch the shank and not the tip of the bit against the touch plate. If you have a 1 inch end mill like a, a surfacing cutter or something like that with a quarter inch shank then you use the larger diameter again which will be the 1 inch mark. Uh, you can use uh, fractions if you put in 1 8 uh, like right here I'll put that in as 1 slash 8 for a 1 8 inch and it automatically converts it to point uh, one two five, and that'll work with any 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 measurement. Uh, or you can just go straight with the decimal numbers like are already in here. And uh, okay, the next uh, section here, the z-axis thickness. That's how far it is to the top of your touch plate, down to the top of your material that you're going to cut. So it's the thickness that's being measured. Go away phone. Okay, then the next section is the width. Now this is going to be the distance from the left hand side of your workpiece that you're going to be cutting to the right hand edge of the touch plate. I'm, uh, I'm going to put a photograph on here with some distances uh, that you can look at, but in this case uh, I've got 2.049 inches. And then the y-axis the y-axis is going to be the same thing, only it'll be from the front edge of your material that you're going to cut to the back edge of the touch plate. Uh, if you watch the video, that makes more sense, I, I would imagine. Anyway, once you have these numbers in here, then you just look over here to this area and it's already calculated for you. Uh, if you watch this, I'll change it to millimeters and you'll actually see it change. So that would be if everything was in millimeters. Now if, you, if you're using millimeters, you want to make sure that all these green boxes here are done in millimeters. You don't want to mix millimeters and inches anywhere on this form because it'll throw it all out of whack. You won't be happy with the results. But if you're in inch mode, that's fine. So this would be two inches per minute, an eighth inch bit with a .769 thickness of the, of the Z plate, and 2.049 inches width for the x-axis and 2.495 inches width for the y-axis. Uh, if you're in millimeter mode, you're going to want to change this 2 to a higher number because 2 millimeters per minute is really moving slow. Uh, so you're going to want to start out at about 12 millimeters uh, per minute, which is about a half an inch a minute. So you, or you can go higher. I wouldn't advise going much higher than 25 millimeters per minute because then you're running at a, at a full inch per minute. 
and again if you go very high you can damage your bit especially when you're coming down in the z-axis uh, you really want to be moving as slow as you can there so anyway uh, once you've generated your g-code excuse me I'm going to switch this back two inches and I've got this set for a 1 8 inch bit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and hold right here inside this yellow box with my left mouse button drag it straight to the bottom while I'm still holding it down to the very last line then let go and then I'm going to right click and select copy now I've copied that to the clipboard now you're going to want to op open up a uh, notepad document or a text document with just plain text nothing fancy like a word processor and I've got one over here I'm going to drag over here okay and this is just a uh, new text document and notepad I'm going to right click inside here and select paste there's the G code okay now then you're just going to select file and save as and you just want to give it a name uh, that, you, that you can refer back to uh, can be anything you want I would recommend using the bit size like for here it's a, an eighth inch bit so I would put you know one underscore eight you know in mill or whatever you want to name it at you can create as many of these as you want for all the different bit sizes that you have so if you have uh, V bits, uh, ball nose, end mills, fly cutters, it doesn't really matter. Uh, just create as many of those as you want you can, and you can create them in metric and in millimeters. And then you just load those files up and zero your bits. I hope that makes some sense. Uh, after uh, I finish this part of the video, today I'm going to go out to the shop and I'll load up uh, a couple of these files that uh, you can create using this and actually run them and show you the zeroing process on a couple of different bits like a v-bit and an end mill and I think you might catch on pretty quick there uh, one thing that's important is that you uh, when you first get your zero plate you need to try to get one that uh, is about three quarters of an inch thick uh, you really don't need it much thicker than that but going with something that's real thin like a quarter of an inch uh, may not work too well because on a quarter of an inch thick uh, touch plate if you're using a v-bit you won't be able to get that shank diameter uh, to touch the touch plate you'll be touching with part of the V and that will throw your zero axis off so you if you have one that's thicker typically on a v-bit you can set your bit low enough close enough to the work surface that the shank will be the part touching the uh, touch plate but I, this will all make more sense when you see the video I think and uh, anyhow I hope this helps and we'll see what happens if you have any questions uh, my email address is on the uh, front page of this uh, workbook and you're welcome to give me a shout thank you Okay, I've loaded up a G-code file that will zero this machine out based on the dimensions of that touch plate. I'm using PicSender to do this. Uh, I was using G Universal G-code sender before and it was working fine, so now I'm testing a PicSender. As you can tell right here, I've got this bit a little more than a, maybe close to a quarter of an inch away from this side of the touch plate. And it's positioned, you can't see it very well here. But the, but the bit is also just inside of this corner, this front right corner here. So when it moves over, it won't touch the corner. It'll actually be touching this side. After it touches, it will back off. It'll move towards the back of the machine and then back over uh, to where it's behind the touch plate. It'll come forward and touch the touch plate again to, to set the uh, y-axis. Then it'll back off, raise up, move over into this area right here. It'll move the zero. The Z will move down and, and touch on the top of the plate and reset the Z zero. Then it's going to raise up and move over back there out of the way, so I can pick this up without endangering the bit. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so you'll be able to see more of it. There we go. Okay, let's go. It's moving to the left. 
touch back off, move around. Now it's moving forward to set the Y axis. Backed off, now it's raising up and it's going to come forward. Now it's moving down to set the Z axis. And now it's out of the way. You can pick this up without any work, worry about touching the, the bit at all. Okay, now that it's zeroed, I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to remove my alligator clip and my touch plate. And I'm going to send this to zero. So go to zero on the X. Go to zero on the Y and go to zero on Z. And as I'm sure you can probably see, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. I'm sitting right on zero all the way around. Gotta love it. Okay, I've got a quarter inch V-bit on here now. It's a 60 degree V-bit. I've got it lowered down far enough so that when it makes contact with the touch plate it will be contacting the shank and not the cutting edges or the cut out portion of the V-bit. So I've got the quarter inch program loaded up, the same one I used for the straight bit. And we're going to run that and then watch what happens and then we'll send it to zero, zero, zero and zoom in real close and See how it looks. There we go. Okay, as you can see, it's moved back out of the way. Oop. There we go. I'll move this out of the way, disconnect my wire, and now I'm still using pick sender just like the last one. And I'm gonna use pick sender to send it back to zero. There's the X, there's the Y, and here's the Z. Now let me zoom in real close on this so you can see just how close it actually is. That's about as far as I can zoom in but I think you can see that it's right on that tip corner. Okay I have another bit that I'm going to give this a try with and I hope you'll be able to see this this is a three-quarter inch straight router bit. I don't know that I would use it on here, but I don't see why you couldn't. And it's got a quarter inch shank. Okay, I've changed the bit diameter in the program here so that it shows that it's a, seven, a, a 0.75 inch bit right here. Even though it's a quarter inch shank, it's still a three-quarter inch bit. So with that, I'm going to copy that G-code like we did before and create a new file and then we'll run it. I know it doesn't really look like it in the video here, but right here is the cutting edge of this bit and it's going to move over and make contact with the plate right here. Once it gets around on the back side as it's getting ready to move forward, I'm just going to reach back here and give it a turn like that. So now this cutting edge right here we'll be making contact back there. So let me turn that back around the other way. And we're ready to go. So I'm going to zoom in a little closer here for you. Well, actually, I'm already zoomed in. Okay. So here we go.
Now I'm going to just turn that a little bit, a quarter turn. There we have it. So I'll move this out of the way. Zoom back out. And now I'm going to tell Pick Sender to send that bit to zero, zero, zero. Okay, X zero, Y zero, and Z zero. this wire out of the way and there you have it one other little tidbit that I thought I'd throw out there to you uh, I keep mentioning uh, pick sender and universal g-code sender uh, I've seen a lot of posts on the Inventables forum about people complaining about Universal G-Code Sender locking up, especially when they run large files. Uh, I had the same issue, and I still do, but uh, several months ago I went online and purchased a copy of uh, PicSender, and anytime I have a, real, a very large file to run, I only use PicSender for that, and it works great. No, I'm not getting paid for this. I had to pay for my copy of PicSender, and I don't have a problem with that. But uh, uh, I, ran, I created a lithophane several months ago, and it was, oh, I think it was somewhere around 400,000 lines of G-code, and it ran it without a problem. Uh, Universal G-code sender seized up after about 200,000, maybe less. But uh, PicSender works great, and it's not expensive. You ought to give it a try.